Hey everyone, today we're going to try making a wood texture from scratch in Photoshop using no plugins or anything like that. Uh, there is one layer in here, uh, in this example that I have in front of you, that uh, is an image. And that image comes from texturelabs.org. And I chose that because uh, they're the ones who inspired me to try my hand at making some Photoshop tutorials. Brady's tutorials are awesome, informative, powerful. And I thought, you know what, maybe I can share some of the knowledge I have. So big thanks to them. Please go subscribe to their channel if you don't. And uh, while you're here, and if you like what I do, you know, like and subscribe on mine. That sounds great. Let's get started. I made a new document here. It's horizontal, and uh, the reason for that will be clear in just a moment. Uh, but it's 1920 by 1080, 72 DPI, 8 bits, uh, and RGB. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this background layer into a, a regular layer. And I'm going to fill it with 50% gray. I'm hitting Shift F5 to bring up the fill menu and 50% gray. Then I'm going to go ahead at this point and go to Filter, Render, Fibers. And I'm going to set the variance on this to 4 and the strength to 7. And I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to render fibers again except this time I'm going to go ahead and really crank the heck out of the strength and bring the variance to 15. Um, that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and rotate my canvas now. Uh, the reason I did this is because the fibers render top to bottom, not left to right, and I want left to right. So I just chose to start that way. Uh, we're going to keep these layers for later. I'm just going to put them in a folder for now, just so I don't get confused. I'm going to add a layer on top of this, and again, I'm going to shift F5, fill it with 50% gray. Uh, this is going to be the beginning of basis of our of our real wood grain. Uh, we're going to add some noise. Like 30% of the amount um, will go uh, Gaussian, and we're going to set it to monochromatic. Looks pretty good to hit OK. And then we're going to go up to filter. We're going to render clouds this time. Uh, it should be black and white. Um, if you're wondering why we did this on the same layer and not a separate one, which is what my instinct would be, I recently found that you can go ahead and treat it. Uh, you, you can go to Edit, Fade Clouds. That Fade option will be whatever uh, effect you used last. Um, the, here, I would say turn this down to somewhere in the 30, 35 range. That looks pretty good. Click OK. And then we're also going to go Filter distort wave. Uh, I like to set this number of generators up to around 300. You're not going to see anything yet because we have hardly anything going on in the wavelength. For both the wavelength and the amplitude, I'm going to set the minimum somewhere around 140. For the maximum on the wavelength, I'm going to bring it up around the 400 mark somewhere, and the amplitude, we're going to bring that up around the 800 mark. Now here's where the actual wood grain part comes in. We're going to go with the horizontal scale, and we're going to turn that up. And you'll see it's starting to take form already. Uh, anywhere, you know, you're going to use your own judgment for this. There's going to be a little bit of play, and yours is going to look a little different than mine, probably. But use your judgment. See what looks good. You want something that yields a result, as you can see in the preview. Uh, make sure before you hit OK that your type is sign and your undefined area is set to wrap around. Click OK. We're going to right click on our layer here and we're going to convert it to a smart object. And the reason we're going to do that is because we're going to go into filter, use liquify. We're going to reference this liquify, uh, apply the same exact brush strokes to another layer. So we want to be able to salvage it. So when you first get in here, you're probably going to have the forward warp tool selected. Make sure it is. Make your brush sizable. And you know, you're going to just do little click and drag motions. Nothing crazy, just to kind of get a little bit of a, you know, an organic deviation. I'm going to stop around here and move on to another part. I'm going to click on this twirl tool. This will help us create some knots in our artwork. And you can kind of see how that takes form. I think it looks pretty cool. And you can use the bloat tool to kind of bring a little bit more out of it and then switch back. You know, by, by manipulating this effect, you can get some really great results. It's just a matter of patience. 
how much time you're willing to put in. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop after this. Click OK. I'm going to make a curves layer. Lighten the lights, darken the darks a little bit. We want to kind of get a little bit of punch. Something like that would probably be OK. And then we're going to add a gradient map. And I'm going to provide the uh, link to download these gradient maps that I made. I'm probably going to put them on my Dropbox for now or something like that. And if I uh, go into the properties of the gradient map, I can scroll down and you'll see these uh, different wood tones I was experimenting with. Now, they, by themselves, they don't look so great. It's, it's really a matter of treating the effect. But this is a pretty good. This is, this is what I found works. I like to add other hues that aren't exactly wood tones. So I want a mahogany look. You'll see that there are sort of stops in it. It's not a perfect gradient map where it's uh, dark to light, top to bottom. You know, it gets a little darker with a little bit more of an orangey brown. And then this is tr more of a truer red. This is almost a, a salmon color. There's like a, 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 a sort of plum color in here. Um, you know, not nothing too intense, but it's not pure red all the time. A uh, little variance helps. Click OK. Now that you've got your curves and your gradient map adjustment layers, you can go in and manipulate them, tweak them to get the kind of desired result you want. You want a little bit of everything to come through, something contrasty and natural. This is really all about personal judgment, personal taste. So do what feels right to you. And once you're done, we're going to move on to the next step. We'll group what we have so far right there, leaving this uh, initial fiber group alone for right now. We're going to create a little bit more elevation in our piece and a little bit more depth by basically making a duplicate of this and having uh, a second layer with a bit of a bevel. And I'll show you how we do that. We're going to duplicate the group. You don't have to worry about naming it. Open up that group, click on the layer, that has just the black and white, you can paste this black and white layer. Uh, it's going to come in as a smart object, so you're going to rasterize it. Then you're going to select all. I'm using Command A to select all, Command X to cut it. And at this point, I can delete that layer. I'm not going to need it anymore. And on the group we created, we're going to apply a layer mask to that. And then Option click on the mask to open it up and paste our black and white rasterized image in. And we're going to go ahead and tweak the curves at this point. We want to create something really contrasty here. And we're going to take this whole thing, we're going to soften it with the Gaussian blur. Nothing crazy. We want to kind of something like that. And then we're going to do a little bit of curve adjustment one more time. So now I've got two layers here. And you're not going to notice any difference until I go ahead and double click on that group to start messing around with the bevel and emboss options. It kind of just did a little something. I don't know if you caught it. I'll zoom in so you can see it. Little subtle thing like that. You can move the angle wherever you like. I'd say put, you know, you want it up top, probably like 90 degrees in that ballpark. Set your glass contour to a straight line like that. Uh, I have my highlight mode as color dodge. My shadow mode is color burn. Highlight mode being around 80% opacity and color burn being around 50%. And you're, you know, these settings are going to vary for you. Uh, but, uh, you know, I have a, the size is small, it's pretty soft, you can sharpen it if you want. Um, but this is this is what I found looks good on, to me, to my eye, but again, this is up to your personal judgment. Go ahead and click OK, and if you don't like the intensity of the effect, you can always just turn down the opacity of the layer, and it kind of even things out. Um, we're going to add some more grain on top of everything. These layers we created back at the beginning, um, we're going to start, we're going to convert them each into smart objects. Move them up here. We're going to apply these fibers to the curve of the wood that we created with our liquify tool. To do that, we're just going to open up the group, group two, that has everything that we need in it. Hold option over the smart filters, click and drag it onto my new smart objects over here, and you should see the the effect take place with that little circle there. We're we'll gonna do the same thing one more time. Option, 
click and drag onto my layer one and you'll see the effects you see the knot hole that came through and some of the so more subtle curves started to show up and then we're just going to turn these off right now and one by one let's do this the subtle grain first let's set the mode to multiply on that and see what it looks like on and off see i like what's happening there and then on this one we're going to go switch over to a soft light i think i like what's happening there and uh, I believe soft light is one of those filters where fill and opacity do slightly different things. Uh, but let's, I'm going to set my fill to around 20. So what we're looking at here is starting to feel like a, you know, it's starting to really bring some stuff out. Uh, if we want to do a little bit more punch up, what I would recommend is creating a new layer, fill it with 50% gray. Double, uh, we can double click on that. I'm going to click on gradient overlay, nice little... Uh, black and white click OK and then rasterize that gradient and we'll add some more noise into this picture here we're going to add some noise and this time don't worry about it being monochromatic actually I know that most people would tell you to keep it that way but I, don't, I, I disagree and uh, you know we can kind of keep the same levels this is this is a subtle thing uh, that we're going to turn down really you know to like 15 or something not something you you really see so it's just a subtle little adjustment layer as you can see there but now that i have this this is starting to feel pretty good um if uh let's let's reference the original one i made okay that's a little bit darker it's a little more subdued uh the way we're going to handle that is we're going to take everything here and i'm i'm on my my mac i'm holding shift option command e and that creates a new layer uh, that uh, flattens basically everything that's below that point. So, and, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring this into Camera Raw Filter here. And this is where we're going to kind of start to get a little bit more of a subdued look. I turn the exposure to a little bit. I bring the contrast down because I feel like that, something like this feels more natural than this. So let's bring the contrast down. I'm going down about 25. Bring the highlights up a smidge. I'll bring the low, the shadows down. I actually do the opposite with the whites and the blacks. I bring the whites down quite a bit, and I bring the blacks up quite a bit. Uh, the reason I do this is because this gets impacted at other stages. The texture clarity again. These are all personal judgment, but I I I think when once you bring the texture down a little bit, it feels a little bit more convincing. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put mine there. And I'm going to turn my clarity up a little bit, you know, because I do want I do want a little bit of punch. Bring the vibrance up, the saturation down. It's starting to really feel like a, an authentic texture to me. And let's go ahead and do some other stuff while we're in here. I'll go into optics, and maybe we can add a little bit of a vignette that kind of adds a nice grain there, uh, a little a little depth to the edges. And you know, that's a little intense, but I like it. And we'll go into effects. We'll add some, add some more grain. When in doubt, add grain. It definitely helps smooth things out. You do your vignetting in here too, by the way. I'm not sure why they have it in two places, but that's uh, that's what I do. And if you want to do some color grading, you totally can. If you want your highlights to be kind of towards the yellow, or in, and your shadows towards the blue, this is uh, again, this is all up to personal taste. Click OK. And that's feeling pretty good. Now, I would say if there's one last thing you want to do at this point, um, I would say you can make another copy again using Shift Option Command E. I'd say, you know, de desaturate it with Command U and uh, turn down the saturation. Or you can hit Command Shift U and it just does that for you. And this is just one last thing you can do to really punch it up. Go into filter other high pass, and you know, go ahead and manipulate a little bit. Around ten pixels is pretty good, and then switch over to overlay, and see if you like what's happening there. It adds a little bit of a groove. It's a little deep, uh, but I'm gonna bring it down again. I, I don't like to keep my fills too high. I uh, maybe fifteen. And again, it's just about building the layer slowly and getting that effect. Um, I like what's happening here, uh, this, so I'm going to call it at this point. I I will hide this so you can really take in the final piece. Oh, I noticed in the top little corner here, there's a 
there's a spot that's messed up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, layers and just stretch it out a little bit. I know it's not necessarily good practice, but I think it's okay for our purposes right now. I think that works. If you do want to punch this up a little bit more, one of the things you can do is kind of sample some of the darker colors with, uh, with your eyedropper tool and another layer and maybe for example like the knot if the knot is not looking uh right you can go ahead and fill in that knot with a darker color and then maybe we'll add another little bit over here switch over to multiply and again turn down that that fill kind of adds a little bit of depth to the, the knots in the wood and that helps and again as far as texture goes uh, you can add a little bit of grit to it. The grit that I found works is I go to texturelabs.org and I picked Grunge 158. I just want to say thanks again to Texture Labs because they do really cool stuff. I'm not trying to steal their stuff. I'm trying to show you that they have great resources and you should totally subscribe to their channel. So please do. I set the blending mode on this to subtract because I kind of like the darker cuts but you can really mess around with the blending mode that you think looks best for your piece I, I just have found you know you do color dodge that works too I think um, if you'd like a lighter scratch but I think that subtract works great and then I just also again turn that down all right that should about do it I'm pretty happy with the end result here I hope you're happy with the result of yours if you liked what you saw here please you know give it a like and this is my first time attempting a YouTube tutorial, so hopefully I can uh, get a little better at doing this and you know, do some more stuff. If there's anything you'd like to see uh, or learn, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to make videos about it. Uh, until next time, have a good day.